So let's do something where I'm going to draw something that isn't going to be good to look at. Uh, sorry, this screen share, I'm not uh, seeing. Oh, you fools. You needed to tell me this whole time. I was painting this whole time. Oh, I didn't know. Dang. I was painting this. this that was pretty time. good. <laughs> I'll have to paint over again. Uh, you, you, you screwed me, guys. No, it's not your fault. I should have done. Um, I'll do another painting. So, you know, you look at this. It doesn't really read good, right? Because there's too much variety. There's nothing to really stick to, yeah? Yeah. But if we do this, you know, that looks pretty good. Right? It feels like a strong composition. And the reason why is because there's some familiar elements. There's a triangle here, a triangle there, a triangle there, a triangle there, right? But there are different shapes and sizes, and there are different angles, and one is more opaque than the other. You might think, well, this one's a little bit complex, so that's probably what it didn't help. No, I mean, you can make this one on the bottom complex. You just got to keep these elements in mind as you're doing it. You know, we can add some more complexity to this. You just got to keep all of this stuff in mind. And the more you add, the more you have to think about how it's going to contribute to the image, not take away. Right? So I made this more complex, but it doesn't necessarily look worse, right? No. It's because I kept themes pretty much the same. I kept adding more triangles. I, when I added lines, I just kept on adding more lines, but I didn't space them equally. I didn't make them the same size, you know? I didn't orient them perfectly either. Some of them are rotated, you know? That adds up to making an image that feels familiar, but unique. And if you do this well, you know, you can, you can coordinate an image that looks really powerful. Actually, yeah, I'll start. I'll start another painting. And so, narratively speaking, it's the same thing. You know, <clears throat> having contrast and familiarity is pretty great. So, for instance, you look at Star Wars. You have a character like Darth Vader. What's great about Darth Vader is he's the villain. You know what I mean? It's pretty obvious he's a bad guy from the start. And then they humanize him. They make him the father of our lead character. And what makes it familiar is this idea of like, we already knew that Luke Skywalker had no father. You know what I mean? And we are also familiar with you know, something about abandoning of your children. People are familiar with these types of concepts. People are familiar, familiar with even being at odds with their parents. So this is something that was truly uh, caught them off guard, but in all the right ways. You know? Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of times when people write, make stories, they forget this type of stuff. So you take a look at a movie like Blade Runner, uh, 2049, which was a commercial flop, um, which rightfully should have been because it was like all over the place. Uh, as much as I loved it for its visual fidelity, it was one of those movies that just didn't know what it was talking about. And a lot of people, if they don't, they can't attach themselves to anything, they're just going to be checking out, you know? Even if you watch the trailers, the trailers don't tell you anything about it. I remember I felt the same way about Black Panther when I first saw the movie trailers at first because they were just like, black people sci-fi. 
I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> that's not a thing. <laughs> you know? I was like, that's not... Nobody's going to watch this movie just off of that premise. Sci-fi black people. But then they were like... Then they were like, oh, no, no, no. One of the, one of the people was betrayed by the sci-fi black people. They did. Uh, they done did him wrong. You know. They said they. They basically said like, "There's some betrayal here. There's a little bit of pretentiousness from this." I was like, "Oh yeah, people can relate to that. People can relate to being treated condescendingly, right?" Yep. And people can can relate to the story of like, you know, people hiding and keeping their technology for themselves, like being selfish. You know. Um, I was like, oh, okay, no, nah, never mind. This is good. This is a good, this is something that people can go watch. You know? Like, the premise alone is not enough. Like, some premises are. Like, you can just show transforming cars. You know what I mean? Transforming cars is good enough that turn into robots. That's cool enough. <laughs> you don't need anything more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but some things don't. You can't just say sci-fi black people. That's not enough. That's not cool enough. Uh, but but you know, I think uh, movies like Toy Story they do they do the same thing. They have a great premise, but they have like a re- enriching story. You know, so what they do is they get you in the front door with their premise, because the premise is you know what happens when you when you leave the room, like your toys come to life, which is great. And I think a lot of people kind of have the sentiment of like, what, like when they're kids, like, what are my toys doing? You know, it's a cool premise. And then they, they lock you in with a great narrative, which is that about friendship, which everyone can relate to, you know, and jealousy within friendship, you know, yeah. especially if you're a kid, it's perfect. I think like adults can get to it, understand it, but also children can understand it. It's a great film. But none of that is actually any of our concern. As concept artists, we don't, we're don't. we rarely, if ever, in the rooms when that kind of conversation happens, especially in a larger studio. Maybe a smaller studio, maybe more so. Right? And so my advice is usually what we do is we are, are the people who design characters like Boba Fett. The characters who may have nothing cool about them, but they look cool they look amazing you know and that's most of what my career was is and is is just make things look cool so anyway so there are some some fundamentals for sure and if you want to get really good at practicing this one of the great tools you should do is to like, you know, watch and read about good storytelling. So you can kind of have that in the back of your mind when you're designing characters. Try to put like a soul in the character's eyes a little bit type of thing, you know? (laughs) And then, um, and then like read and watch or learn about product design and industrial design to learn the visual aspect of it because those those industries that's like their whole job graphic design industrial design like their whole job is to make you buy stuff just from looking at it you know like if you think about like an ipad like the ipod creations hold on just a second you guys are talking loud again not a problem hey whisper thank you um they played Roblox and they're getting excited. Uh, yeah, product designers and graphic designers, like that's like, especially like t-shirt design, like that's their whole job is just like buy this t-shirt. Nothing is different about all the other t-shirts. They're all the same shape and size. This one's cool though, for whatever reason, because of the patterns, because of the logo, whatever, you know? Uh, and what I do is I look at stuff like that. I look, I go... It's kind of what I was talking to Maya about, which is, you know, don't don't just guess on what makes things look good. Try to understand what makes things look good. 
it's pretty complex. Uh, you know, there's a lot to it. You know, design, making things look good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but my advice is to look in places where that's their f- full-time job. Our job as concept artists is part of that too. But ours are a little bit deeper because sometimes it involves characters and, you know, things that are in the context of like a film or a video game. It mixes up versus just straight up this thing on its own. It really sometimes is contextually invalid. You know, like somebody can buy an iPhone, which looks great, has a really good aesthetic to it, but you know, have a dumpster fire for a home. You know, like all their other stuff, like the desk that they put their iPhone on is from Office Max, you know what I mean? <laughs> Where if you're designing for a movie, you're also designing the desk, you know? Yeah. Like, in fact, I w- if I was designing a character, I would not give them the iPhone. I would give them something that would make sense to their character to push that story, right? So I'll give them yeah. like, like a Blackberry or something, something older, like a flip phone. That could be part of their narrative. Where in reality, yeah, like, you know, even poor people have like iPhones, interestingly, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So your product product designers don't think about like the fuller context of like where it's the the final product's gonna be. Not all the time. Inter- interior designers do think of this way. Like they think of more macro architects too. But that's where you would go, that's where I would go look. Okay, yeah. Well I um I've been looking at uh guys like um Scott Robertson who like draws cars and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's super impressive, and uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. That's uh, probably the best place to look. Yeah, uh, there's a lot to it. I wouldn't say that whatever you, wherever you start, is worth doing. Uh, I think too, one thing that people people uh, don't realize is that just like this very thing of like. Um, this very thing of like, you know, design is still pretty new. Like a lot of people just don't know design nor how to teach it, even the best designers, you know? And so the, the best places that this is enforced or trained is in those, in those fields that I just mentioned. Right. Like you think about film and games, like especially the game industry is even younger than the film industry. You know? Yeah, and it's growing so much faster too. Yeah. So that would be my advice. Yeah, start start there. That's where okay. I started. Like a lot of my ro- robot designs are also heavily inspired by like car designs. Because mm-hmm. a lot of cars look dope. Yeah, your stuff has a very like uh, industrial kind of um, car like quality. Yeah, look at look for the uh, learn from the best. Look at the best. Mm. Some of the best designers are not concept artists. A lot of concept artists, what I like to call like human centipeding. Have you heard of human centipedes? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> so human centipede, for those of you who don't know, know this demonic not demonic, but this psychotic surgeon sews people's butts to their mouths and makes them eat their their poop. And when I say human centipede of like the industry, I don't mean that that's what's happening. People are sewing themselves to butts. What I mean by this is that uh, a lot of people just copycat one another. So that's why you see a lot of familiar looking art. And so one of the ways that I found to kind of diversify was to literally just not look at that stuff as much. So I like Pinterest more for reference gathering. And that's why I like looking at other industries specifically to avoid this problem. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people saying like air, you know, the people who are on art station, like everyone's looking at art station, like get away from art station because you see a pattern. Of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all good artwork. It's really great. It's just very familiar. And it also sends the wrong message that this is the only kind of work that exists. There's a lot of different types of work out there. Yeah. You know, like within our industry, 
a better metric is like think of like the kind of games and movies that you would want to work on and think about the kind of genre they live in it's a much better metric like so if you're like i really love skyrim you know i don't know why you would but let's just imagine that you would you know then look at the kind of concept art that they look for or want start building towards that so you like destiny go towards that Yeah, no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I've very personally very deeply looked into. Especially with the art books and the kind of sick where they got their inspiration from. And only recently when I was like really just kind of like looking at the game while I was playing it, I go, it's literally it's like this like your typical like dragons and fantasy with people with guns. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, and there's lots of different games coming out now, like because of like you know the accessibility of game engines and tools are much easier to use. Like Blender is free, for instance, the free software. It's pretty powerful. Um, so more and more studios are are spawning up. You know, in the game industry right now, the, the most money making industry is in the mobile space. They make tons of money. Company that I work for currently is a primarily a mobile studio. Yeah. Uh, the game that I'm making is not for mobile, but uh, the reason why we can make it is because of mobile money. Uh, wow. Fortnite makes so much money because it's also mobile. It's not just it's cross platform. It's incredibly brilliant. Like all these new game engines, like Unreal Engine Five and all these great stuff that's even in the, in the current Unreal Engine is gifts from the Fortnite winnings. Like all the money that they made from Fortnite, they're putting it back into the community, which is awesome. Holy cow. Yeah, people talk crap about Epic because they like buy exclusives and they're trying to destroy Steam. But let me just be, uh, let me be clear that this is my opinion and it's a very strong one. Steam has been like kind of running the show for quite a while. I don't think anyone's ever challenged them. Yeah. And um, I've worked for companies that had to make games on sold on Steam, and it was a nightmare. Really? Yeah, competition is is good. Yeah. Um, specifically, it's because uh, if you are a what I like to call a double A studio, not a triple A, where you have the money and resources to really kind of push your game on every level. Or an indie studio where, you know, it's okay if you don't make billions and billions of dollars because the staff count is two people usually, right? Yeah. Um, but it's like somewhere in between where you have like a staff of like 15, 20 people maybe, you know, and your game does need to do well. Like it's either, it's, there's no in between. It's not like a game that's kind of okay, makes kind of okay money. It's either you make reasonable money for what would be a small development or lots of money because it just people love the game and everyone goes and buys it. Very rare do you have like the in-betweeners. Like it's not like a fair matchup of like saying, oh yeah, you know, if you have a game that you made with 20 people, because that kind of game will be critiqued alongside triple A games just because of the way it looks uh, and the way that it's presented. A great example of this is No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was made by like a handful of people. Uh, not a lot of people. And so when the game came out and people were like clearly un underwhelmed, as they should have been, they promised a lot more than they could have accomplished. Uh, they were technically a double A studio. They weren't that big. Like 12 people, I think, worked on the whole game. Oh, but people wow. treated it as if hundreds of people worked on it. And so when the game did really like did really good numbers, but then ultimately had a lot of backlash, you know, luckily they had a dynamic within that studio where they, you know, you can tell there was some sort of kinship because they didn't leave. Like a lot of people, the key players did not leave the studio. A lot of the people who uh, worked on the game loved the game, but they just went heads down and made the game amazing over a series of years. Now people love the game. 
it's really a, a phoenix from ashes type of situation here. It's awesome. But that's because, you know, when you have like 12 people and you're listening, you guys are all intimately connected, whether it's through friendships or for working together, you know, it's great to kind of see that they, they took all the highs as well as all the lows together as a team. Uh, and they were lucky, though, that they made AAA numbers, though. Because since their team is so small, they can just kind of stay tight, you know, and use that money that they made, even they did have, they refunded quite a bit of money, too. They could keep their team small, and they were able to, like I said, uh, rise from the ashes, which is good. You know? Yeah. But anyhow, the point I'm making is that there's more and more studios like this that are smaller, looking for people to, to help them make their games. So just pick like a thing that you want to do, like a genre of art, and just stick to it. There's a couple of genres I usually tell people to kind of stay away from, and it's usually the contemporary genre. Like anything that's a little bit realistic, uh, I would stay away from concepting in this way because um, uh, people could do 3D scans now, right? Like you don't want to like just paint like realistic people wearing khakis, you know? You want to paint like like something like this maybe works fine because it's like a little bit more of a design. It's like more not just a cool person face. It's like there's like a he's wearing an outfit. It's a little bit of a costume design too. Anyway, any other questions? I have one. Go for it. Um, I was because I've heard so many professionals say where they're like, "Oh, I was working professionally out of high school," and like, and whether they mean it or not, it is a little bit disheartening here, like at least from my standpoint, because uh -huh. the problem I've always had. I was like, well, how do you, because I heard of some of the people that go, well, I was just drawing and I got contacted by people. And you have there are people who get, you know, like full-time gigs. And I go, well, how do you do that? Because, like, like, I live in Colorado and I go, networking's not exactly my strong suit. I try my best. Mm -hmm. I try to get my stuff out there. But, like, to some degree, it's, I'm like, how do you, like, how do you get your, like, how did you get your foothold? Mm -hmm. Like, how was that journey for you? So I like to tell people there's only really two things you can control. Uh, it's the quality of your work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's the people that you uh, connect with. Okay. So essentially your portfolio and um, your portfolio and then your um, uh, contacts. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this idea of uh college like out of, or sorry right out of high school yeah i don't really know too many people that are like that so i might just you might have just heard a couple people and then mistakenly generalized like it's it's actually not the case um and then on top of that uh it doesn't matter if that's true anyway you know, this is back to what I was saying to you earlier, right? About like, be careful about your insecurities because they'll mis misguide you. They'll mistakenly make you think of something, you're, you're doing something wrong instead of keeping you focused. You understand? Yeah. Because if you're focused on what really matters, which I've, I'm just explaining to you right now. So if you weren't sure before, I'm telling you quality of your work and the people you know that's all you should care about everything else it's just a distraction good example of another distraction of uh like, oh, let's go through the list of distractions that you just mentioned one uh you graduated from high school and you don't have a full-time job uh oh distraction two um wait, hold on my kids are being called uh, distraction two you live in, uh, you said Colorado, so there's not a huge network out there. Yeah? No. Distraction, uh, distraction three, maybe like, uh, you know, you see a lot of times on websites you need to have work experience, so you even get work experience. That seems like a good one. 
Yep. <laughs> um, so you just go there on the list and you just get distracted by one thing or another. When in reality, you already know the answer. You just are ignoring it. And the answer is, I just told you, quality of work and the connections you make. So when you look at this stuff, type of stuff here, when you compare this stuff to your, your, your work, for instance, let's say this is what you wanted to do, there should be a clear and obvious separation. Okay. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. If you cannot see that separation, you're, you're willfully being ignorant. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're obviously trying to say, well, that's different. But the reality is, is it though? Like, is it true that these artists are really good and they have more opportunities because of that? Obviously, right? Yeah. But is it also true that they were not always this amazing? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. So something has changed. I need to sign in. I need to, I need to get in this. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. I hate that like when I sign in, it won't send you back to it. So I had to like immediately sign in and then double down real quick. <laughs> Hot tip. Control click on the back link once it starts to send you in the wrong direction. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that way you can just refresh the page, you can just grab it. Okay. Uh, Danny draws. So there's an artist named Danny Gardner. You see this image right here? Yes. What do you think about this? You think it's pretty good? I do. Okay. Now, if I were to tell you that this is the kind of work that he was doing um, when he was 20 years old, do you think that has anything to do with why he got a job? Was it because he's 20 or was it because of his work? What do you think? Because of his work. Okay. What do you think of this? What do you think? Frank? It's trippy. It's cool. Okay. Uh, let's go back in time. Yeah, okay. Five years ago? Yeah, that's about right. So you look at this, what do you think? You think this is pretty good? Yeah. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, this was done by uh, one of my friends, Adon, and he was, uh, I think he was 19 when he made this. Maybe 18. Is that all 2D? No, it's 3D. Okay. 3D. Yeah, he was definitely 18, maybe 17 when he made this. So... Do you see how like looking at the age is a distraction? Looking at yeah. the time in which they left school is a distraction. Because yeah. if I told you this person was 40, would that make any difference? It really, no, it doesn't. Well, it, it, actually, it, it would. Like, in my current, under, like my current mindset, yes. Because like, oh, well, they're at this level, you know, when they're older than I am. So I don't not beating myself up over it. Yeah. But that's my point. It's a distraction. Because ultimately it doesn't matter. Right. I think you're starting yeah. to get the point. Right. Like yeah. the reason why he gets a job has nothing to do with whether he is younger or older. Because if I show you got... an older, yeah, if I show you an older artist, you'll be like, well, that's because he's older. If I show you a younger artist, you're like, well, they must have done something different. See how that, that conversation you're having in your mind is just entirely just wrong. Yes. Where you're just not looking at the actual reality. They are just a better artist than you. It's really that simple. Yeah. yeah. And once you keep that focus of like, all I actually need to do then is just get good, right? Yeah. Get good, <laughs> then you'll be fine. And the reality is that's exactly true. And the only reason why it wouldn't be true, the reason why like if you're really good, which I have known many artists who are very good, the mm -hmm. second variable comes into mind where they make artwork, but they live on a desert island. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they have like this amazing museum of all their artwork just living on this island, but there's no traffic to it whatsoever. You see, the reason why a lot of poor nations stay poor is actually because of transportation of goods, right? 
I mean, you can take a look at even on our own nation. You don't even have to look at other countries. You could just look at other na- or other states. When you look at the bordering states of of the coastal states, we see a lot of trade. We see a lot of commerce, right? Mm-hmm. And the further you get into the center of the states, you start seeing less and less of that, right? Yeah. There's a reason because they're closer to other nations, you know. Mm-hmm. And when you're closer to other nations, you get to trade more goods. When you trade more goods and other, you know, exotic goods, you know, you're, you're going to be exposed to better, better circumstances. It's just going to exponentially grow, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So, <clears throat> so start thinking about this now in this in this con- capacity, and you'll start to stop distracting yourself. You know what I mean? Yes. That is all a distraction. So you okay. asked me, hey, how did I get into the industry? If my answer is not an easy one, it can distract you. If my answer is an easy one, then I'm lucky. Again, it distracts you. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because I've met countless amounts of artists, literally thousands of professionals and thousands of students. And I've heard almost every kind of story from the ones that are super lucky to the ones that I can't even believe they made it out. But one thing is in common with all these artists that are successful. They're really fucking good. And they share their work. The reason why I talk to them is for that very reason that they share their work and they're sharing themselves. They're in in, an area where in which I can actually talk to them, whether it's on social network or it's in person because of an event. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so now let's let's talk about this more in a detailed way, okay? Mm-hmm. So, um, so for me specifically, I exploited the fact that I live in California. I live in Southern California where a lot of the industry exists. So I would go to every and all, hold on just a second, the kids are yelling, Delilah Julian. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. So, you know, I would go to the event. I'll talk to people all the time. Absolutely. You know? Mm-hmm. And that is a huge advantage. Absolutely. Right? So a lot of people do not have that advantage. I recognize that I did. So I took full advantage of it. Here's the funny thing. A lot of people I went to school with also knew about the same advantage, yet they didn't take it. Because they were distracted. They would have all sorts of reasons why. Well, you know, I have this thing going on. Or, oh, that's like oh, an hour drive. Or I'm like, bro, an hour drive is nothing. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. what are you thinking? I used to host this event, and I hosted it in California, and I had 12 of the leading artists in our industry doing, doing a talk there. And you can interact with them after, right? Mm-hmm. There was about 180 people showed up. Half of those people were from California, and the other half, the other half of people, were from uh, out of state or out of country. When I look at that number, I'm like, where? This should have been gangbusters filled up by like 90% people live here. Because I know for a fact there's tons and tons of students and people who work in our in, or want to work in our industry. But yet they're not here. You know? So even people that don't have, oh, well, I'm sorry, even people that have the means get distracted. Okay? That's interesting. Yeah. So this is, this is easier to do if you have legit reasons, like you said. You live in a further place, right? That is a legit reason that makes it harder for you. Absolutely. But what I'm trying to teach you here is then, you know, be the person who overcomes that, right? Be the type of person that, you know, five years from now, you're going to be teaching a class or you're going to do a seminar or a workshop talking about this very thing about how this is how you overcame those challenges, inspiring another group of individuals to do the same thing. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're going to be like, don't be distracted. You're going to say that because you heard me say it and you learned from it. And it's true, you know? And you're going to yeah. pass that same knowledge to other individuals and they're going to be motivated by that same wording and then so on and so forth. We're all helping each other out, right? Yeah. And so, and if I were to tell you, you wouldn't be the first person from Colorado to get out and work in the industry, I don't think that would surprise you either. So even with le- legitimate uh, excuse, right? Mm-hmm. You'll also find legitimate success. Yes. Okay? Yes. And so the best way to think about all of this now, now this is the practical tool moving forward. Focus on the only thing you can control. You can control your work, the quality of it, and you can control who gets to see your work by posting on social networks, posting on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, ArtStation. And as you get better and better, more and more people will love it. And more people that love it will know about your work. And more people that know about your work will give you work. It's really that simple. There's a direct correlation to when I post on social networks and I make more sales in either my classes or my tutor- or, or my tutorials. So for instance, the last month or so, I've been working really hard. So I haven't been selling as many classes, right? I haven't been selling as many tutorials. It's a direct correlation, hand in hand. Okay? Okay. And so uh, one thing that I always like to try to tell people is, Find reasons to do, don't find reasons to not do. Okay? Yeah. Like, why should you do this, not why you shouldn't do it? Yeah. Okay? And that kind of mentality is really great. It's really, it's a forward-thinking mentality, and it's an actionable mentality. It's easy to say, well, like, I don't even know where to start, right? Versus, I don't know where to start, comma, but maybe I'll start here, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how that person started, comma but maybe this is what they did you know don't just make it a period sentence when you start these statements of a misunderstanding or a confusion you want to follow it up with a solution you know you don't just trap yourself where it's like oh i can't do it and yes. just, you know make it you know give yourself an option don't just do that yeah actionable like is there an action to your words or is it yeah. just a matter of fact statement because matter of fact statements work man you know yeah like, it's true. It's harder for you. I'm telling you. But I'm also telling you, so? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, I actually and, saw a video from a freelance artist who's actually from Colorado Springs. I was like, wait, what? And he's well known. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> is it Ra- uh, uh, Randall? Uh, I think it actually might be. He's an illustrator. Yeah. He was, uh, I watched He's a good friend of mine. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, wait. And I was, I was, I was back. Yeah, I was worked- like, wait, this guy's in my backyard. <laughs> Yeah, he worked at uh, he worked at our station. If he's the same person, it probably is. I'll look up later. I did probably. Yeah, he is. told me I should move to Colorado, and I was like, maybe. Hmm. So, so then that that would make it even harder, right? If I'm like out there, you're like now even Anthony Jones is out here getting jobs, but the 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 reality is that I could. It, I don't need to live in California, and that has become more and more true as time has gone on. It's like no matter well, what, you won't make it work. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, even just saying in general, like there was a time where, yeah, actually proximity of work was a real thing, like definitely in the 80s and 90s. But as we went into the 2000s, like that just become less and less true because of the internet. It's just true, you know? Yeah. You don't yeah. need to have to live near the work. And with this whole corona has proven for a lot of people too is that, yeah, you don't even need as many employees as you thought you needed. You know, which is actually really uh, not great because you don't want to just straight up cut people off without some proper transition to this new world order that we're about to get into, yeah. right? Yeah. It's going to be a disaster. Um, but companies are starting to realize, like, wait, we don't need all this overhead. Um, so yeah, especially artists, we can, we can almost entirely work anywhere. You yeah. might find yourself that you're going to, you, you might actually be working for companies that are not even in the American made studio, you know, if you're good enough. 
So focus on getting good and sharing your work. That is like the biggest and best thing you can do for yourself, my dude. Okay, that helps us hearing from you because I've been having uh, like most of my adopt with my stepfather. It was sort of like, well, it's not going like how he sees it. Like she isn't, he doesn't see everything. But he's like, oh, it's not going anywhere. So if you're still doing this like two or three years from now, you should do something else. It's like he's been pushing me getting three D, and like. Uh, yeah 3d is a is definitely easier to do but i would even say that's starting to go away because 3d is um easier to do like even easier that even concept artists like myself can just pick it up really easily and if you're trained in the arts of design and storytelling and visual aesthetic a 3d tool becomes gangbusters you know what i mean Mm-hmm. It becomes a tool to make art. And and now you have stuff that like the PlayStation 5 and Unreal Engine are pressing is that, look, you could take your high poly sculpts that you would have in like a 3D engine that's almost never been able to be used in any capacity, just other than visually. So now you could just plug that right into the game and it would just work. In fact, the, the biggest problem is not that maybe performance, you might have the opposite problem that it's not performance that's gonna hold people back. It's actually storage space. Um, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Um, it'll be storage space. Meaning like, do you have enough storage on your machine to even hold these games? Right, Call of Duty has just proven this, <laughs> okay? <Jeez. laughs> And then, uh, and and then it will also just be on the user side. Like, I mean, just because you could put a, a multi-billion polygon asset into the engine, it's just engine just doesn't worry about it. Great, that's awesome. But tools that we use still can't really do that, right? <laughs> like, you, there's still a threshold in like Maya, and even Blender, right? You can't just be yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna make a one billion polygon scene. <laughs> And just open your Blender file like no problem. <laughs> so it's actually now the, the very thing where the tools were not the limit, right? We're like, oh, yeah, you know, are now the limit, potentially. And so, uh, but that's going to change too, inevitably. You know? So I would actually encourage you to learn 3D, but not as learn 3D in the way where, you know, you're actually making art, Right. Yeah, like I have like uh, for, for, for 3D for sculpting. Mat- yeah, but like to actually help with your designing process, exactly. Yeah. Be yeah. a better concept artist. I actually encourage it. It's easier than ever. There's so much documentation on how to learn it. You can do it almost entirely on your own. It's just a tool. It's like learning how to use a hammer, right? The real skills that you're learning in my class are the kinds of skills that transcend the tools, you know? Mm-hmm. Like the tools will constantly be changing, but what I'm teaching you now uh, a lot of people still don't understand, you know? Yes. Because whenever they, people see me use a t- new tool, they're just like, whoa, what tool is that? Like, how did you do that? Whatever. Like, blah, blah. You know, they just start getting all caught up on like the hows and the whats versus like the why. Like, why am I using it? Yeah. Anyway. Hopefully that gives you some more insight. It's some foresight. Yeah, man. Don't worry, man. Like, uh, it's a very common question. Like, people are always worried about it. And, you know, speaking of your, your stepfather, you know, like I said, that's a great, the thing I talked about earlier about like educating those who care about you is really important, right? Come, come to them with a thesis about why it's important. And also explain to him, it does take a couple of years to get good at. Like you said, you know, you wouldn't look at a doctor and be like, hey, you know, you've been going to medical school for four years and you're still not a doctor you know it takes time you gotta really learn it it's, it's a very hard skill to get good at it does take time it takes at least a couple of years especially now uh it took me about five years to get really really good but it took me about two years to get a, my first job oh wow but you know i was incredibly focused uh, if you're the kind of person that you're telling me tell these these individuals earlier where you're playing the game for 16 hours a day is something crazy. If you just did half of that time in art, you'll be fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I promise you, you'll be fine. You'll get good. It'll just be a matter of time. All right? 
Yeah, definitely. All right. Any last questions that are short, maybe, if you wanted to ask something? Otherwise, I'm going to roll out. <laughs> the kids are coming. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys on Wednesday this time. We'll be back on schedule. And I appreciate you guys' patience, and I appreciate all your guys' hard work. Don't be strangers, and I'll talk to you guys next class. Cheers, friends. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.